Uh, I've often wished that I had taken journalism classes and just sort of had a, uh, you know, a more immediate grasp of how to get from A to B. I had to like kiss a lot of frogs along the way before I realized that actually this is what a prince looks like because I didn't have the teacher uh, telling me that. So I made a lot of mistakes along the way. But uh, I started off writing for rock and roll magazines. I started off writing for the college paper, writing about music for the paper. And then I started writing for the little rock and roll magazines. And they were such fly-by-night operations that as soon as I got into a place and they would pay me a couple dollars a, you know, for an article, they would fold. And the people I knew at that magazine would go to two other magazines. So now I could write for two magazines that would pay me a couple dollars for an article. And then they would fold. And now there'd be the people from those magazines would go to four magazines. And now I would have four magazines I could write for. So it kind of snowballed from there. Uh, I eventually like had all these places that would hire me to write for them and pay me so little money that I couldn't afford to ever say no to any of their articles. So I, I was a terrible freelancer because I couldn't say no. I thought like every assignment I got would be my last assignment. So I couldn't say no to anything. So I never learned to like hold out for people would actually give me more plum assignments because, you know, I was pretty well thought of and had I held out for the better jobs, I could have gotten them. And instead of writing, you know, 30 articles for $30 a piece, I could have written one for 900. But, you know, so it goes. I learned a lot. I met a lot of really, really, really smart and interesting people. And as I got to my 30s or so, I started to have this Peter Pan complex about, about writing about music. I was starting to be well, it doesn't seem, it was a different environment then. The music was uh, young, so I was, would often be the sort of the old guy in the room or was looking at becoming the old guy in the room. So I wanted to make a, a move and I started to move away from the rock press, the music press magazines into the straight press and I started working for a newspaper called New York Newsday. And I was still writing about music and I went from there to, to Newsweek and I remember at my going away party, people at Newsday thought like, what are you gonna do now at Newsweek? You know, like, you're gonna write books? What are you gonna do in your, sp you know, you're gonna have all this spare time because it's a weekly, not a daily. So it turned out it was a, a tremendous, it was like nonstop work at Newsweek. But, you know, I, I was making that change over and then I became a, an editor of one of the back of the book sections at Newsweek because it was a chance to apply the same skills I used as a music critic to other parts of life. And, and that was sort of how I began my, my juggernaut through this uh, journalism profession. And I went from, from Newsweek uh, to The Times. And I always thought that, you know, I loved Newsweek and I gave a lot of thought to whether I wanted to leave because The Times had come after me. And I thought that at the end of my career, I'll have wanted to work for both Newsweek and The Times more than just having written for Newsweek. Little did I know that Newsweek would go through the turmoil that it has, and that The Times in its own way would have go through the turmoil that it has. Uh, this profession has been changed so dramatically in, in just the you know, relatively short time that I've been in it. We used to be a newspaper because we came out on paper. And now we're a news organization because we come out on organization, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but we are this like, like digital stream. And, and it's a different profession now. You know, at, at some point tonight, we'll get the figures for the governor's race, right? They'll be announced at 9.26. Well, the polls close at 9, right? The, the, now, the, the race will be called at about 9.05 or so. At, at five seconds after 9.05, the Times will have to have up the news of, of, of who won, by what percentage, and an analysis piece, of what that, analysis piece of what that means. Oh my God, Cynthia Nixon is the new uh, nominee for, for governor, or you know, it, her candidacy was a mirage all along, and Andrew Cuomo uh, uh, got 80% of the vote, or whatever it is, there'll have to be an analysis piece of this thing that hasn't happened yet five seconds after it's announced. And, it's a, and, if, and if you don't do that, somebody else has that out there and, and they win that, that, that moment. So it's a really different business. And there's good things about that and there's bad things about that. 
we have an alumni group on Facebook of Times people. And it's, it's kind of like the cliches of, the, of the, the grumpy guys who say, who will, will talk about a phrase that's in the, in the paper that day or something is a headline. And they'll say, well, in my day, that would have never been allowed. And I'm like, you know what, in your day, when the planes hit the World Trade Center on September 11th, we had great coverage that came out on September 12th. You know, and it's just a different world. You know, and, and so it's a transformed business. <laughs>